Calvary boots? Is that a cross or a sword? A chain around the waist? Why such a large rosary? Why are their clothes so different? Dear friends, if any of these questions have ever crossed your mind, you're not the only one. In fact, we've received so many inquiries about our attire that we've decided to make this video to explain the habit of the heralds of the gospel. Salve Maria. We know that a religious habit is a distinctive feature of those who consecrate themselves to God's service. Each charism of the church has its own, which distinguishes it by expressing what's most characteristic of them. For example, the black habit of the Benedictines, which has spanned the ages from St. Benedict until our days, conveys austerity, while that of the Franciscans and Dominicans expresses poverty. And there are so many more. But what about ours? It looks so unusual. What does it express? However, before we proceed, allow me to make a request. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to the channel and like this video by pressing the thumbs up button. You may have heard the saying, the habit doesn't make the monk. And this is true in a way because the monk must be what the habit represents. But it's also true that the habit helps to remind us of the mentality we must have. So by wearing it, we are constantly representing our ideal. And this was Monsieur Joan's intention when he designed the habit. He wanted it to be rich in symbolism and to reflect the essence of our charism. The scapular is a garment belonging to Our Lady, which shows that our vocation is under her protection and care, as she herself stated when she gave it to the Carmelite monk, St. Simon Stock, even promising the certainty of eternal salvation to those who wore it. So how could we refrain from wearing it? When the habit was being designed, crosses of all shapes and styles were considered. By the way, the history of our habit also merits a video of its own. So if you want to know the story behind the origins of this habit, let me know in the comments below. Finally, the style of the cross chosen was the cross of St. James, but adapted according to our charism. The colors chosen for the cross, red, white, and gold, also play an important role in helping to fully express the spirit which we are called to bear and transmit. Professor Plinio said that the color red on the cross signifies the willingness to give oneself entirely, even to the point of death, in defense of the faith for love of the Holy Church. White represents love, purity, and chastity. And the golden thread that runs down the middle symbolizes faith and devotion to Our Lady, the true cords that link heaven and earth, men to God, as well as representing the noble character of our ideal. If it's true that a soldier going into combat must wear a good pair of boots to protect his feet, what about those who are called to evangelize in the most diverse regions of the globe, from tropical forests to the African plains, or even in sprawling urban cities that are true mission lands in our day and age? The same principle applies. Because according to the advice of the great apostle St. Paul, these missionaries must put on the armor of God to be able to hold fast on the evil day 
and hold their ground with all their strength. And the apostle continues, that their feet should be shod in readiness to proclaim the gospel of peace. And this is what our high boots symbolize. Similar to riding boots, they remind us of the fortitude that should characterize our fight on earth and of the missionary zeal that takes us to the four corners of this world. So we may announce the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, regardless of the obstacles we may encounter, whether spiritual or physical. Also worthy of note is the chain we wear around the waist, alluding to the spirituality of the great Marian saint, Louis de Montfort, which is entirely in consonance with the charism of the heralds of the gospel. This chain that encircles, that will gird the waist of each one, is the chain of slavery. It is the chain of servitutu ex caritate, the slavery of love of Our Lady. St. Louis de Montfort recommends the use of little iron chains for those who, after having shaken off the shameful chains of slavery to the devil, to which original sin had bound them, have willingly taken upon themselves the glorious slavery to Jesus Christ. This chain, though of iron, is more precious and more valuable than all the golden collars of emperors. For far from depriving us, it bestows freedom, the freedom of the children of God. And if the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, scandal to the Jews and folly to the pagans, should be a motive of glory for us, the chains of slavery, scorned in past times, should also be carried with enthusiasm by the slaves of love for Mary Most Holy. Even the extra links that hang from the belt loop have a meaning. Seven links in honor of the seven sores of Our Lady. Five links in honor of her five joys. Or three in honor of Our Lady. Beloved daughter of God the Father. Admiral mother of God the Son. And faithful spouse of the Holy Spirit. Ave Maria, gracia plena. Another feature of our habit is that we also carry a weapon, the most effective in the fight against the devil. This is what Professor Plinio argued when he explained that the rosary is the prayer of the strong. For it has such efficacy that it makes evil retreat and the good advance. And so besides praying it daily, we also carry it on the right side of our waist, thus proclaiming the glories of God through Mary. There is also a part of our habit that constantly reminds us to never look back. Like the apostle who urges us to renounce our past life, to strip ourselves completely of the old man in order to put on the new one, created in the image of God, in holiness and justice. This is what the hood exhorts us to do when we put it on. We are reminded that prayer and interior solitude are the means to obtain this. And as our founder, Monsieur Jouan, explained in a homily, the point of the hood connects us to God in heaven. It symbolizes the descent of the Holy Spirit on the one who studies, on the one who acts, on the one who does apostolate. Finally, the medallion, synthesis of our spirituality, which is made up of three pillars, expressing our devotion to Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, the apex of all Christian life, our Lady, the short and easy way to reach full union with our Lord Jesus Christ, and the papacy, 
the representative of our Lord Jesus Christ on the earth. This is also expressed by the pontifical keys on the collar. Today we have four types of habits. The beige one worn by the aspirants of the heralds of the gospel. That is, underage minors who wish to participate in our charism to the extent their age permits. The white tunic with the brown scapular for men. The golden tunic with the brown scapular for the sisters. And the all brown habit for those who are members of the clergy. For a herald, the habit has a very profound meaning not just because of the insignias, but for an even greater reason. For example, just as the celebration of Holy Mass requires the priest to wear vestments that symbolize the outstanding virtues that he must possess, a herald also ought to wear something that expresses the virtues and gifts that belong to his charism. That's why wearing the habit is an important factor in maintaining the dignity of the charism and vocation. Moreover, since wearing the habit helps the religious maintain awareness of his vocation, this is where the role of our charism comes in. Beauty as a means of giving witness to the Creator. And this is what His Holiness St. John Paul II affirmed in his letter to artists. Beauty will save the world. Likewise, his successor, Benedict XVI, showed that the via pulchritudinis, the way of beauty, is a special and fascinating means to reach God. That's why we as heralds are aware of the need to wear our habit daily in order to evangelize today's world. Therefore, if popes recommended giving witness to this world, which tends to accept ugliness as beauty, it is all the more necessary to show the world the beauty of being Catholic. As St. John Paul II affirmed, adapting the habit to the conditions of time and place in order to attract the people of today rather than those of past ages. For the 21st century, Professor Pliny and Monsieur Juan strive to present an example which opposes what is exhibited and promoted by the media, such as excessive indulgence in sensual pleasures and rampant consumerism. With our habit, we desire to show the captivating beauty of the Church, in which our love of order, hierarchy, and perfection shines forth. And above all, the desire for holiness, which is our highest ideal. And so, dear friends, I hope you found this explanation helpful. And if so, please like the video and leave a comment below. Salve Maria! If you like this video, press the like button and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our videos.